Epcot's Food and Wine Festival has begun and we are bringing you the best of the fest when it comes to what to eat, tips on how to see your favorite bands, all the things you cannot miss, and so much more. We've done it all, we've eaten it all, and we're sharing it all with you right now here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. The 2023 International Epcot Food and Wine Festival runs now through November 18th. There are currently over 25 food booths located throughout the park, with several more opening in August and September. But it's not all food at this food festival. The Eat to the Beat concert series performances are free with Epcot admission and take place at the America Gardens Theater. Internationally known artists will perform Friday through Monday, with local bands Tuesday through Thursday. Catch Boys to Men, 98 Degrees, Hanson, Sheila E. and more. You can see the full lineup on our website and stay tuned for a hot tip that will help you guarantee a seat at the show without having to wait hours in line. There are also scavenger hunts and food crawls to keep you entertained while you snack around the world. And don't forget about all that exclusive festival merch, because this year they've got merchandise lines featuring Chef Mickey, a whole picnic collection with Mickey and Minnie, an Encanto collection, and some exclusive pass holder only figment merchandise. In today's video, we're just going over the very best of the festival, but fear not, we've got a comprehensive, super in-depth guide to all things food and wine. We've compiled everything you need for a perfect food and wine festival, including documenting over 200 dishes and drinks, every concert date and time, every detail about the festival in our 2023 DFB Guide to Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. Our team has been working really hard to pull this one together for you guys with the latest and greatest tips we have on hand to help you become an expert. You'll find this in all our other snack and holiday guidebooks over at dfbstore.com. And don't forget to use Use code YouTube to get a discount. Okay, are you ready for our choices for the best food at this year's festival? Here we go. We're gonna start in Mexico with a tostada de carnitas, and it's time for something new and delicious. First up, we've got this braised pork on a fried corn tortilla with black beans, avocado mousse, queso fresco, and chives. This is a dish we really, really enjoyed. The corn tortilla did a great job of really holding up. It was really crunchy and added to the nice creaminess of the black beans and avocado mousse. Plus, the pork was fatty and tender, delicious flavor. Add the queso fresco to that, which provided even more flavor, you've got a winner of a dish. Savory, salty, creamy, and crunchy. It's got it all. Try this one for $7.75. All right, we cannot express how thrilled we are to see the adobo yuca fries with garlic cilantro aioli back on the menu at the Fry Basket here in 2023. These seriously impressed us in 2022 when they debuted, and they were our favorite things at the booth that year. In 2022, their texture was fantastic, perfectly crunchy, their flavor was spot on, like Texas toast garlic bread in French fry form, and the sauce served with them offered a delicious tangy flavor. Now, the fries did not disappoint again this year. They were easily the best thing at this booth. The flavor of that aioli is fantastic, light on the cilantro flavor. The breading on the fries is delightfully crispy, and the fries are incredibly garlicky in the best way possible. Imagine the best garlic bread you've ever had in your life, but in a fry shape. Trust us when we say you do not want to miss these. Get them for $5.50. Now, this dish is a favorite of ours, and we have a feeling it could become a favorite of yours, too. The braised beef poutine is made with French fries with braised beef, boursin garlic, and fine herbs cheese sauce, cheese curds, crumbled boursin garlic and fine herb, and gherkin relish. This dish was savory and rich. The meat fell apart easily. The flavors mixed with the herby boursin cheese. And when you get a crispy fry with all the toppings in one bite, it is perfection. Plus, this year we liked how the relish added an acidity to cut through the richness of the poutine. The fries do get soggier the longer you let the dish sit, of course, so just be careful there. But overall, this is a dish we'd highly recommend. Try it for $10 at the refreshment port. Sticking with refreshment, Port, we've got to give a shout out to the peach wine here. This thing was seriously delicious. It was delicate, sweet, and light, and almost a slight floral touch to it. As a follow-up to the heavy poutine, it was really enjoyable. Plus, we loved how refreshing it felt. Awesome on a hot floor today. Try it for $11 over at Refreshment Port. The smoked corned beef is back, and it is something you do not want to skip. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorites. This deliciousness is served with house-made potato chips, cheese curds, pickled onions, and beer cheese fondue. And no, we do not blame you 
for drooling all over your screens at the sight of that cheese. This one's over at Flavors from Fire. It's been at Flavors from Fire for many years and we're so glad when it comes back every year. Now this has a great balance of flavors. There was the salty beef, the creamy cheese, the little tang from the pickled onions and the crunchiness of the chips and the mixture of textures added a good dimension to the dish. The cheese was amazing as it always looks amazing and it was a warm, comforting win. This one's six fifty at Flavors from Fire. Sounds a lot like the poutine we just talked about, but they both have like a very similar vibe to them in terms of their flavor profiles. Both delicious. Now in the past, this delicious dessert has been at the Hops and Barley booth, but this year it's at the new Flavors of America booth, which is basically the same thing. And we're so glad it has returned. The freshly baked carrot cake comes with cream cheese icing and it is a sticky sweet sensation. The icing melts off the sides of the cake in the most amazing way. The freshly grated carrots and spices make the treat absolutely fantastic and the nuts were a great touch. It tasted more like a nutty spice cake than a carrot cake, but we never mind. It's dense, but not dry, and the icing, though it can harden a little, melts on your tongue. It has a hint of a tang to it, isn't overly sweet though. If you're ready for autumn, we think you're gonna love this. It's 450 at Flavors of America. The mango lassi is not a new drink, but it has made a special appearance on this list this year because it really impressed us this year and last year. We got the non-alcoholic version for five bucks, but you can get it with chai cream liqueur for $11. It was very light for being a milk-based drink and it had a great fruity flavor. We found it to be really fresh and it's great if you need something to cool you down from that Florida heat or after eating some of the more spicy dishes at the festival. If you want something cool and fun and non-alcoholic or alcoholic if you want, this is a great choice. It's over at the India booth. Now this next dish is so easy to miss, but it's not one you should overlook. The returning spicy githeri features white beans, pigeon peas, curried Ben's original long grain and wild rice, and kachimbari slaw. Now the rice was cooked well and it was flavorful and the vegetables provided a nice burst of flavor. The greens added a crunchy texture and we love the spicy kick to this one. It's a bit more of a slow burn that creeps up on you though, so be aware of that. You can try it for $5 at the refreshment outpost. Kind of confusing, refreshment outpost versus refreshment port versus refreshment station, which is now over by test track. But the outpost is the one that's kind of just past China on your way over into Germany. Now this returning dish has been a hit over and over again, and this year it once again impressed us. The teriyaki chicken bun over in Japan is made with a steamed bun filled with chicken, vegetables, and teriyaki sauce. In the past, we've listed it as a best of the fest item for kids and adults, and it's making a return appearance here again. This year it was about 60% bao, 40% filling, and 100% delicious. It was meaty with enough sweetness in the teriyaki sauce to really complement that dough. Get it for $7.50 and don't be surprised if you come back for another one. Now we've got a returning cake on the best of the fest list served with Irish cream liqueur custard. This is one we've really enjoyed in the past. It's the warm chocolate pudding cake in Ireland and we had to include it as the best of the fest. It's priced at $4.75, so relatively cheap and it's a really good buy. It's rich and chocolatey with just a hint of flavor from the booze. Classic, simple, and delicious. It's been on the festival docket for years and years, and we're so glad it still comes back. If you're looking for an incredible set of drinks to pick up at the Food and Wine Festival, the Mimosa Flight at Shimmering Sips would be our choice. This flight lets you sample a little bit of everything. The Tropical Mimosa, which is sparkling wine and Minute Maid passion fruit, orange, and guava juices, pog juice. The Berry Mimosa is berry fizz, sparkling wine, and white cranberry juice. This one is new for 2023. And the Blood Orange Mimosa, sparkling wine, and blood orange juice. There really is something for everyone here. You can get it all for 14 bucks. If you're looking for some new gear to wear to this year's festival, we've got some brand new shirt designs just for this occasion. They just came out a couple weeks ago, including our new line of Disney princess wine glass tees and tanks. Let everyone know you're here for the food and wine vibes while supporting everything we do here at DFB. You're going to find all our merch at dfbstore.com. Okay, what can we say? We love our cheese. And if you do too, then the Canadian cheddar cheese and bacon soup is a must get. Yet. Yes, even if that means having hot soup in the blazing hot Florida sun. This is over at Canada, of course. It's a staple dish of the Food and Wine Festival. Typically, the soup is packed with delicious flavors. Dip your pretzel bread in all that cheesy goodness and you've got a serious winner on your hands. This one is six bucks. Now we're sticking with Canada for one more item, the classic filet mignon. This is a Canadian filet mignon served with mushrooms, boursin black truffle and sea salt mashed potatoes, yum, and boursin black truffle and sea salt whipped butter. Now the beef was incredibly delicious, so easy to cut into, and paired perfectly with that truffle butter sauce. Though we could have used some more of that tasty truffle butter, they didn't really give us very much this year. Rich and wonderful, it's a great way to sample a delicious steak without a La Cellier reservation, and without having to pay like 60 bucks, right?
right? Grab the filet for $9.75. Now we've got a brand new drink next on the best of the fest list, the Dr. Low alcohol removed Riesling. It impressed us big time. This was sweet, but incredibly smooth. And there's also a touch of sourness, but in a great way that added balance. Think of a green grape in liquid form with touches of sour and sweet in it. And that's exactly the flavor it nailed. This really delivers on flavor, doesn't have much of an aftertaste. And if you're looking for something a little different that is alcohol removed, give this one a try for $6.50. It's over in the Germany Pavilion. Still in Germany, we've got a classic, the Schinken Nudeln. This dish is made with pasta gratin with ham, onions, and cheese. It's typically an absolute win. In 2022, we loved it, but the slice we got this year didn't impress us as much. Still, we're keeping it on the best of the fest list because it's impressed us for many years. Maybe we just got a bad uh, batch this time around, but you let us know in the comments if you've had it this year, what your thoughts are. There wasn't anything bad about it in 2023. It's a great option for those who love baked mac and cheese, but the portion size this year was a little bit smaller than what we've seen in the past, and it was a little greasier. We also felt the flavors weren't as powerful. The ham came through when you got a bite with a ham piece in it, but there weren't all that many in the dish, and there wasn't really a lot of onion flavor either. We're hoping this is just a one-time issue, like I said, perhaps just the cut we got, or maybe because it's the first day of the festival and they're st still working out some issues. So definitely stays on our list because typically it is a tried and true favorite. Hopefully things will improve. It's five bucks, so you're not gonna lose too much if you try it. Now we're headed over to Belgium. This is a dish that's given us mixed results in the past, but in 2022, it made our best of the fest list and we're thrilled to have it reappear again. The beer braised beef is served with smoked Gouda mashed potatoes. In the past, it's sometimes been overly salty or featured overdone meat, but we found it delivered on flavor and quality this go around just like it did last year. Get the braised beef for $6. Heading over to the Alps, the warm raclette Swiss cheese is an iconic dish at the festival and one we can't stop recommending. We particularly enjoy the one with alpine ham, baby potatoes, cornichon, and baguette. The cheese is amazing every time. The ham adds that smoky flavor and everything else is cooked just right. The bread was a little dry, but when it's covered in a giant layer of cheese, that ceases to be an issue. Grab the raclette cheese for $5.25. Now, brand new addition to the best of the fest here, still at the Alps. If you love chocolate and fondue, you must, and we mean must, stop by the Alps booth. In 2023, the new dish here is the dark chocolate fondue with berries, pound cake, and meringues. This fondue is so good. The chocolate itself is not overly sweet, but instead felt nicely balanced, and it paired great with the item served to dunk in it. Get it for $5.75 at the Alps booth and let your chocolate dreams come true. We got a brand new crispy duck bao bun with hoisin sauce. Over at the China Pavilion, it is a do not miss. It's one of the best bao buns we've had in all of Disney World. The bao bun itself was wonderfully pillowy and a touch sweet with a good bounce back when you bite into it. The duck fell apart when we were eating it in a great way. So combine the saltiness of the duck with the sweetness of the sauce and the brightness of the green onions. You got a dish that will happily order over and over again. Try it for 525 in China. All right, now, if you're looking for a seriously incredible and unique brand new drink at the Food and Wine Festival, we found it for you again at the China booth. The Fiery Dream is made with citrus vodka, triple sec, guava nectar, and spicy hot honey syrup, and is priced at 13.75. We loved it. It had a fruity and refreshing taste to start with, and then that little bit of heat, hence the name Fiery, starts to hit you in the back of your throat. This is one of the more unique drinks we've had at Disney World in a while, and we loved it. Give it a try the next time you're in the park. Let us know what you think. Ready for the plant-based dish of the fest, the Impossible Burger Slider at Flavors from Fire. If you're looking for a plant-based dish at the Food and Wine Festival that'll surprise you with its flavors, head on over to Flavors from Fire and grab the Impossible Burger Slider. This returning dish features wasabi cream and spicy Asian slaw on a sesame seed bun. It's priced at six bucks. In the past, we felt like the portion size has been a good value for the price, but the texture of the Impossible meat has sometimes been a bit off. This year, however, we really liked this one. This actually has a surprising kick to it in the best way possible. That wasabi is not playing around. Plus the impossible meat had a better texture this year and is one we'd recommend to both plant-based eaters and meat eaters alike. Now, one of the new dishes to arrive at the festival this year is the impossible moussaka at the grease booth. And it was a hit for us as well. This is sort of like a lasagna slash casserole dish with eggplant, the impossible meat and more. And we really liked it. The dish was heavy, rich and felt like its very own mini meal. It might not be great on a super hot day because it is very filling and heavy, 
tasty, but it's hearty and comforting and the ingredients blend together really well. Plus, we love the bechamel sauce on top, which was sweet and creamy. Might not slam you with a ton of flavor, but this dish does a good job of being that comforting little casserole that you want to tuck into after a long day. Get it for $5.50. And the potato and pea samosa with coriander lime cream is a returning dish that has seen some great improvements this year. This one's over at the India booth. Sorry, in the past we found it to be soggy and very spicy. Now this year we were a little surprised by the spice, but the pastry dough was crispy and flaky with the inside was nice and soft. It was a win. The coriander lime cream was also a nice touch since it added a sense of freshness to the dish and the peas on the inside do add a lot of flavor, but they're on the mushy side, so be aware of that if you don't love mushy textures. Also, this was overall on the salty side, but we didn't mind that all too much. If you're looking for flavorful and fun plant-based dish, give this one a try. You can get it for $5.50 in India. Now, we had a couple of surprise hits on our Best of the Fest list this year. The Italian Hot Beef Sandwich at Flavors of America has shaved beef, spicy jardinera, and au jus on a French roll. It was one our team didn't feel strongly enough about to place in the main Best of the Fest list, but we still had to give it a mention here, which is how the surprise hit category got devised. This dish was lighter than we expected, but also juicy and hearty and a little herbaceous. There was a nice spicy kick from the jardinera, but it wasn't super intense. The beef was very savory almost briny, we loved it. The bread gets soggy with the au jus, but we don't regret dipping it in there at all. Overall, it's a fairly simple dish that really just is what it claims to be, a hot Italian beef sandwich. It does have quite a few things going on with it, but we were surprised by how much we enjoyed it, and we think you might too. Try it for $6.25 at the Flavors of America. And another surprise hit for us, while you might think of these as rather basic options at the Joffrey's carts around the park and may overlook them, don't walk past this one as quickly. The new frozen roseberry drink is a blend of frozen lemon and strawberry rose syrup, and we loved it. It was sweet yet tart in all the right ways and very refreshing on a hot day in Epcot. We got more of a strawberry flavor, not as much of a rose flavor, but there is just a hint of something that makes it a little unique, which might be the rose, but thankfully wasn't overly floral. We opted for the non-alcoholic version, which is $6.49, but you can get it with Grey Goose Vodka for $14.99, and I'm sure it'd be delish. This one's at the Joffrey's Coffee near Canada. All right, ready for our controversial best of the fest choices? Some of our team loves these, others hate them. So where will you stand? You'll have to listen up and decide whether they're worth a buy for yourself. If you do taste them, be sure to come back and drop us a comment with your thoughts. First is the griddled cheese at Greece. Now in the Greece booth, you're gonna find the divisive cheese with pistachios and honey. It has made our best of the fest list in previous years. One time we tried it, we find it had a great mix of savory and sweet flavors, creamy cheese, sweet honey, salty pistachio, great combo. But in 2022, our reporter tried the dish and was not impressed. To them, the flavor was strangely pungent and the honey didn't mix well. Though the pistachios and cheese texture were nice in 2023, this was back to being a very good pick. Our reporter this year found the cheese, which is a goat cheese, to be quite rich. Plus, they liked how the honey paired with the cheese and found the pistachios to add a great crunch and nutty flavor that helped to bring out the cheese flavor even more. Where will you stand on this cheesy treat? You'll have to try it and find out. Get it for $5. And this next one on our controversial list is another that really divides our team. It continues to do so. The beignet a trois fromage is a warm beignet filled with three cheese blend. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, for some, it is. In 2022, one of our team members said it was the best thing they ate all day. The peppery cheese sauce was delicious and the toasted cheese on top had a great texture. But in 2021, our team wasn't all that convinced. Some of our reporters that year hated it and one absolutely adored it. In 2023, it once again proved to be controversial. Our reporter who tried it this year said it would actually be one of their picks for the worst of the best. The savory filling, which was, in their opinion, a gritty gravy, was not the way to go. For a small dish, this can surely cause some big divisions. If you give it a try, it's priced at $6.95. Be sure to drop us a comment and let us know what you thought. It's over in France. All right, looking for a few new dishes the kids will love? Well, we think they're gonna enjoy these ones. The apple strudel with vanilla sauce is back in Germany, and this has been a favorite of ours for years, and it again did not disappoint this year. The flavors are simple enough that picky eaters won't be deterred, and when mixed with the vanilla sauce, it makes for an extra delicious experience. This year, we felt like it really captured that apple pie flavor, and the pastry was wonderfully flaky. That all paired with the vanilla sauce well, that sauce is incredible, by the way. If you have a little one that enjoys apple pie, vanilla sauce, and 
pastries, this is an easy choice. Also note that our reporter fully recommended this one for the main best of the fest list. In other words, don't overlook this just cause we put it in the kid category. Grown ups, you're gonna love this too. Get it for 450. And another easy choice for the little ones is the Belgian waffle with berry compote and whipped cream. It's simple, it's satisfying, and the waffle is nice and moist and the fruit is fresh. If you got a kid who loves sweet treats and breakfast, don't miss your chance to pick this up over in Belgium. Now, every once in a while, something comes along that warrants a whole new weird stuff category. And this year, it's that pickle milkshake. Okay, so this is definitely a bit of a gimmick to go along with the new Muppet Lab in the Odyssey. This is the brewing booth. It's like you're drinking straight from the pickle jar, but the consistency is ice cream. So sour, salty, bizarrely much better than you'd expect. Also, a shout out to the unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Scotch Bonnet Pepper Curry Wings. Literally, that's the name of them. With cool cucumber yogurt yogurt, also at Brewing, for being so incredibly spicy we forgot we were in a theme park and not on an episode of Hot Ones. And finally, it's time to crown the best of the fest booth. Ready? Okay, our runner up this year is the Fry Basket. Not all of the items at the Fry Basket are necessarily our favorites, but we do feel like the booth as a whole is one of those you gotta visit, even if it's just to get one or two items. The Adobo Yuka Fries are by far our favorites here and well worth your time, but we can't deny that the Fry Flight is iconic. It comes with sea salt and malt vinegar fries, barbecue bacon fries with smoked aioli, and sweet potato casserole fries with candy pecans, toasted marshmallow cream, and maple bourbon glaze. You can also order the individual flavors here as well. The sweet potato casserole fries were our favorite fries in the flight, and they really captured the flavors of sweet potato pie in the best way possible. The salt and vinegar fries were not our favorite here. They were just kind of boring, but probably a safe choice for those who don't want anything too adventurous. And then there were the barbecue bacon fries, which tasted like Lay's barbecue chips. They had a nice smoky chipotle flavor going on, which elevated them beyond your basic barbecue taste. Then we got the new pickle fries with dill ranch. These were basically just fried pickles. They were wonderfully crispy though and had a crumbly breadcrumb coating. Plus the sauce completed them really well and that was a nice bonus. We heard a lot of people raving about these. Now to us they're just basically fried pickles. Nothing too different but we did enjoy them. And on top of all that you can get the salty dog cocktail here with the Boyd and Blair potato vodka, grapefruit juice, ginger, simple syrup, and lime with a salted rim which we really enjoyed in past years and found to be light, sweet, and tart. All in all each individual item at the booth might not blow you away on its own, save for those yucca fries, but it's the kind of booth you just gotta go to because it's a booth full of fries, and several of them are really good. Now our winner, our best of the fest booth winner this year is the Japan booth. We truly mean it when we say you cannot order a bad thing at the Japan booth this year. The teriyaki bun made our best of the fest list as an individual item above, but everything here impressed us. The fire taiko roll, a sushi roll with spicy tuna, cucumber, and pickled daikon radish served with spicy sauce, had a nice tuna that wasn't overwhelmingly hot. It can be a little controversial with some because of the tuna, so just keep that in mind, but one of our reporters loved it. The beef wagyu don has some heavy beef and almost caramelized onions and some other items that really help to balance this dish as a whole. We also love the sake passion cocktail, which is a great pick for those who don't love the taste of alcohol. Overall, the booth as a whole felt like it provided a well-balanced meal. We'd easily get all these items over again. We think you might enjoy getting them too. All right, ready for our festival tips, y'all? Opening day is always crowded, but if you can, avoid visiting the festival on the weekends, especially those holiday weekends coming up. Weekdays will see much shorter lines for food booths. You should pack a tray, yep, like a cafeteria tray, so you don't have to worry about juggling all those little paper food boats and drinks as you find somewhere, hopefully not the top of a trash can, to set down your food and eat. You should also have a plan of attack. Over at DisneyFoodBlog.com, we've got free printables of all the dishes at this year's fest and a handy map to help you navigate the festival. You can grab those for free at disneyfoodblog.com slash foodwinemap or just scan the QR code. When you get to Epcot, don't forget to grab a festival passport as well so you can check show times and more. If you want more info, we've got every single detail in our 2023 DFB Guide to Epcot Food and Wine Festival at dfbstore.com. While there are plenty of things to eat right now, keep in mind that there are several booths opening later. Hawaii and the Noodle Exchange, those are opening August 15th. Four more brand new booths 
Chiefs make their debut on September 22nd as part of the Disney 100th anniversary celebration. Those are going to be Bubbles and Brine, Char and Chop, Swirled Showcase, and Wine and Wedge. Don't forget those other festival activities either. Eat to the Beat concerts are happening nightly and lines can get long, so Eat to the Beat concert dining packages can offer you the chance to pair lunch or dinner, either a three-course meal or a full buffet, at a participating Epcot restaurant with guaranteed priority seating for an evening show on the same date. That's how you're going to secure your seat without waiting in line for hours. Packages start at $47 for adult and $20 per child. You'll also find same-day walk-up dining packages at Regal Eagle Smokehouse for just $35 per person. Now, this is a quick service meal too, so you don't need to plan the time for a full sit-down meal. It's a great situation. Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak Scavenger Hunt is back. This one tasks you with the mission to find Chef Remy all throughout Epcot. The official map costs $9.99, but you do get a prize. This year, it's an insulated fabric lunch bag, which is very, very cute. And you can get that once you complete the scavenger hunt. Or here's a tip, just pick it up when you pay for the scavenger hunt in the beginning so you don't have to backtrack. And there will also be a Halloween-themed scavenger hunt coming later in the festival. Emile's Fromage Montage is basically a food scavenger hunt where you purchase five out of ten cheesy dishes from the food booths in order to earn a special completer prize from Shimmering Sips. That prize is the same as last year, a strawberry cheesecake soft serve with a small piece of cheesecake on top. And there is plenty of festival-exclusive merchandise to be had this year, including spirit jerseys, magic bands, full Encanto-themed collections, picnic blankets, hats, ears, loads of pins, cutting boards, plates, aprons, and a food and wine Dooney and Burke collection of bags as well as a lounge fly. We spotted the new collections at Creations Shop and World Celebration, but they're also available at other merchandise locations around the park. And don't forget to prepare for the heat. Stay hydrated. Don't forget your sunscreen. Seek out the AC throughout the day. Bring a cooling towel. Take breaks. Whenever our team is covering the festival, we always tell them to make sure they get into the AC regularly. They drink a bunch of water, take a little break, cool down their phones and themselves because that's the only way to survive a summer day in Disney World. And don't forget to stick around after dark to see Spaceship Earth's light show, which has added Be Our Guest back into the rotation for the duration of the festival. So that does it for part one of this year's Epcot Food and Wine Festival, y'all. Once the rest of those booths open, we'll be back on the channel to give you full reviews. And of course, we've got even more comprehensive coverage over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Full reviews for every single solitary booth and pictures of every single food item. So don't forget to check it out at DisneyFoodBlog.com and in our guidebook at DFBStore.com. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.